All right, here we go. This is 6.2 notes. All right, recall exponent properties from Algebra 1. If you have number 1, a to the m times a to the n, that's a to the m plus n. Number 2, a to the m to the n, you multiply the exponents. Number 3, if you have a product to a power, you take a to the m times b to the m. Number four, if you have a fraction to a power, you take the numerator to the power and the denominator to the power. Number five, a to the m over a to the n is a to the m minus n. Number six, this is your negative exponent property and we reviewed it in the warm up today. a to the negative n equals one over a to the n. The seventh one I forgot to put on your notes is the zero property, a to the zero equals one. All right, so number one, x to the one-half times x to the one-third. Which of these seven do I need to use? The first one, right? So this is going to be x to the one-half plus one-third. Well, this isn't new for us. You've done these exponent properties, but what's really new is that we're combining it with fractions. That's the only thing. And yeah, we know how to add one half plus one third. We don't like it, but we have to get a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply the first fraction by three over three and the second fraction by two over two. So this is three six plus two six, which is x to the five six power. It's not pretty, but that's the answer. It really represents the sixth root of x being raised to the fifth power. Okay. All right, number two, I have x to the one-third times x. Now, there's no exponent on that second x, but what is it understood to be? One. one. So I'm going to take one-third plus one. Well, I need to get a common denominator, and that's actually kind of easy on this one because one with a denominator of three would be three over three. So that's x to the 4 thirds. All right, number three. I want, I'm going to give you a head start on this one. It's the same as 1 and 2, but I'm going to see if you can get common denominators on your own now. Did you get x to the 11 twelfths?
for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. On number three, did you guys get x to the 11 twelfths? Mm -hmm. Something I want to mention is if you would have gotten an improper fraction like 13 twelfths, we do not, as an exponent, write that as a mixed number, 1 and 1 twelfth. Okay, you leave it as 13 twelfths. Okay? All right, number four. What are you going to do to the exponents here? Subtract, Subtract them. So you would get x to the 1 half minus 3 halves, which is x to the negative 2 halves. But that's negative 1. Now, we never leave a negative exponent, so it's 1 over x. All right, try 5 and 6 now on your own. negative 1 or 1 over x. And in 6, you have to build a common denominator with a whole number, 3. So that's 6 over 2 minus 3 over 2, which is just x to the 3 over 2. All right, any questions on that? So you're really not doing anything new. We're just combining our Algebra 1 exponent properties with fractions now, okay? And that should make sense based on our warm-up today. Remember when we did 8 to the 1 3rd power? So we're taking our fractional exponents and we're extending them. All right, product property for radicals says I have the square root of a times the square root of b. That's equal to the square root of a times b. Now this property works left to right or right to left. If I have the square root of a times b, I can break it apart as square root A times square root B. The quotient property. If I have the square root of A divided by square root B, that can be written as the square root of A over B. But again, I can work it right to left as well as left to right. Then, if you look at example 7, I have the square root of X to the fourth. And we're going to look at this one of two ways. And I put this little example here. I ha if I had the square root of 36, we know that's 6, because 6 times 6 is 36. So if I want the square root of x to the 4th, what times itself is x to the 4th? It's x squared, okay? And, and that is the answer. But I want to go a different avenue to show you, because this is going to end up helping us. Do you remember that a square root is to the 1 half power, right? So this is can be rewritten as x to the fourth to the one half. And then my exponent property number two says, if you have a power to a power, you multiply them and it's x squared, okay? So look at example eight. If I know this, this is actually x to the sixth, y to the twelfth to the one half power. So it's x to the sixth to the one half, y to the 12th to the 1 half. So that's really x cubed, y to the 6th. So there's actually, and the, the blue examples are not in your notes, so I just want you to add these. There's a, a really fast way to do these. If you have a square root and a variable to an even power, you're just cutting them in half. So if I have the square root of x to the 10, y to the 18th, that's x to the 5th, y to the 9th. Do you see it? It's actually very, very fast. And then if I have the square root of x to the 6th, y to the 16th, what would that one be? Good job. Do you see? It's like really easy. Then the problem becomes when you get to example 9, what do you do when it's odd? Well, what you're going to need to do is break it apart using that product property. You may have wondered, okay, she had us write down that product property. Who cares? You know, why are we even looking at it? Well, the product property will allow me to break x cubed into x squared times x, but then the square root of x squared is x. 
and then that square root x just stays put. So let's do another one. If I have the square root of x to the fifth, y to the tenth, I need to break that apart into the square root of x to the fourth times the square root x, but y to the tenth is an even exponent, so I'm going to leave it with my x to the fourth. So then this becomes x squared y to the fifth square root x. Before we do example 11, let's do one more. If I have the square root of x to the 11, you're going to take the highest even number, which is just one less than, and that will give you x to the fifth square root x. Okay? Now, in 11, we're going to start throwing numbers in with our variables. So just watch me on this one and see if you can pick up what I'm doing. I have the square root of 4x to the 6th, y to the 10th, times the square root of 2xy. And the first radical, these are all perfect squares. So this is going to go 2x cubed, y to the 5th. And the other radical are non-perfect squares, so they stay where they are. All right, if you feel like you're getting the hang of this, I want you to try example 12 on your own. I broke it apart as the square root of 4, x to the 4th, y to the 8th, times the square root of 6y. So it was 2x squared, y to the 4th, square root 6y. Okay? All right. Um, the good news is tomorrow we're going to spend an extra day on 6.1 and 6.2. We'll do another worksheet, and we'll do a lot of work in class. Okay? Um, and then Monday we're going to start 6.3. We're actually going to spend three days on that section, okay, and go nice and slowly. So we'll be part way through it uh, before exams. All right, number 13, 5 over square root 2. Um, in math, you cannot leave a radical in the denominator. It's considered unsimplified. So example 13, this is one you did in Algebra 1 and in Geometry. You just multiply by square root 2 over square root 2. Because square root 2 times square root 2 is square root 4, which is the number 2. Now, number 14, this is algebra 2. You haven't seen this one before. If I have 1 over the cube root of 2, do not write down what I'm going to do next because I'm going to erase it because it's wrong. But suppose I multiplied by the cube root of 2. Okay, Again, don't write this down. I'll tell you when to do it. This would leave me with the cube root of 4. Well, the cube root of 4 isn't 2. So it would be a good try, but it doesn't work. So I'm going to erase this because that was wrong. Now, can you think of something I could multiply the cube root of 2 by that would give me a perfect cube? Noah? Good job. All right, now you can write this down. If I multiply by the cube root of 4, you're going to get the cube root of 4 over the cube root of 8. And what Noah recognized was that the cube root of 8 is a 2. Okay? So this is going to require a little thinking outside the box. It's not as, as quick as square roots. So let's look at number 15. If I have 3 over the cube root of 5, you're trying to think of what can I multiply by that's going to give me a perfect cube. <laughs> What'd you get, Jasmine? 25. Good job, yeah. So you get the cube root of 25 because that's going to give me 3 cube root 25 over the cube root of 125.
just squaring off under the cute group. No. To multiply it. No, not necessarily. You're on the right track is that if this is 5 to the first, you could multiply by 5 squared. That will work. But look in this one. I don't need to multiply by 16. That would actually be too big. What would I want to multiply the cube root of 4 by? 2. two. Do you see that? So I didn't want to mislead you. You're trying to make what's underneath there the smallest number that's a perfect cube. So then this is cube root 2 over the cube root of 8, or cube root 2 over 2. Oh, it's supposed to be a cube root, I'm sorry, if you could fix it. All right, then 17, does yours have a cube root there? So what are you going to multiply by on this one? Cube root 5. So I'm getting 5 cube root 5. And do you understand that the cube root of 125 is 5? Now, numbers on the outside can, in fact, cancel. So number 17 should give you the cube root of 5. All right, number 18, 3 over the cube root of x squared. What would we need to multiply by? Cube root of x. So this is 3 cube root x over the cube root of x cubed. And then that's really x to the 3 thirds, right? x to the 3 thirds is x to the first, which is what we wanted. Okay, all right, that finishes our notes. However, we're going to work on this handout. This, the handout I'm passing out, this is not homework. Uh, we're gonna end up working on this tomorrow as well. The first paper I gave you that says 6.2 worksheet, that was your homework, okay? All right, so what I wanna do with this is to review some other things with you. Number one is the square root of 150. Simplifying a square root means you cannot have a perfect square factor underneath. Well, I happen to know that 25 times 6 is 150, so it's 5 radical 6. For those of you that liked the factor tree method, let me go over that with you as well. You just do 2 times 75. I know 75 is 3 times 25. 25 is 5 times 5. The 5s can come out, and then you're left with a 2 times 3. So you can still get the same thing. All right, number 2. 14 over radical 2. So you can't leave a radical in the denominator. And then you do need to reduce fractions where possible. All right, number three, radical 98 divided by radical x to the sixth. Well, the bottom is going to be x cubed. But 98 is 2 times 49, so that's 7 radical 2. Okay? Then number four, I have 7 radical 5 minus radical 45. Well, I happen to know that 45 is 9 times 5, so that's 3 radical 5. And then you're going to treat radicals as like radicals. If they're the same index and the same radicand, what's underneath the radical, you can combine them. So it's 4 radical 5. 